Hey, this is Chris at Talent Gaming. Today we're going to be looking at a game developed by Massive Entertainment, published by Ubisoft in 2016 for Windows, PC, PS4, and Xbox One, The Division. Wildly successful, selling over 10 million copies to date, The Division is a third-person looter shooter action RPG with crafting elements and optional online multiplayer party PvE and PvP capabilities. The game takes place in an approximate 5 square kilometer area of Manhattan following complete civil breakdown amidst a deadly pandemic. The city is cordoned off and you've been sent in as part of an autonomous unit of tactical agents activated to help save society. The game has been updated with quite a bit of additional content since its initial release and offers a handful of DLC expansions if you're looking for more. System requirements are fairly modest, requiring a quad-core CPU with 6 gigs of RAM and a GTX 760 or Radeon HD 7770 or better, and 40 gigs of available storage. 8 gig of RAM and a GTX 970 or R9 290 are recommended. The game will also take advantage of a more modern GPU if you have it. Check the video description for more details. As a special agent in the Strategic Homeland Division, you'll be tasked with rebuilding operations in Manhattan, investigating the nature of the outbreak, and combating criminal activities during very troubled times through a myriad of missions. Campaign missions vary from finding and protecting VIPs, power plants, and comms relays with dozens of other possibilities. Side quests are also incredibly plentiful and offer a large variety of options. Often updated, they allow for virtually unlimited gameplay. You'll fight alongside the JTF, or Joint Task Force, protect airdrops, search for civilians, and many, many more. Oh, shit. Thank you. The play area covers about one-third of Manhattan, or between four and five square kilometers. You'll traverse sewers, apartments, subways, refugee centers, and even Madison Square Garden itself. The game also offers up many different real-world neighborhoods, such as Hell's Kitchen and Times Square, each having different levels of enemies, which are clearly labeled to avoid getting in over your head. Like in most Tom Clancy games, the combat experience is very tactical. You'll be planning and then executing your moves with some semblance of military expertise, although you can run in guns blazing if you like. The cover system here is quite good and reminds me of the Gear series and how you can use and move between cover while avoiding enemy fire. You'll also employ skills that are rechargeable abilities such as sensors and turrets, talents that are active bonuses when certain conditions are met, and perks which are passive abilities that are always active. Home base is where you'll find updates, buy, sell, and craft weaponry, gear, and equipment, find new objectives, and put together teams with other players if you choose. Here you'll also find the medical, security, and tech wings, which can be further rebuilt to unlock unique skills and perks. As you complete missions, quests, and find loot, points are earned towards unlocking further facility upgrades. Similar in function to your home base, safe zones are unlocked by visiting them and act as quick travel points between neighborhoods, a place to buy and sell equipment, find local missions and quests, and form parties with other players. Enemies and factions include groups such as the Cleaners, Rikers, and Rioters, each with their own motives and mode of operation. Weapons and gear choices are quite plentiful and come in six quality tiers. There are dozens of available firearms ranging from pistols, shotguns and submachine guns to assault marksman rifles, as well as lead spewing light machine guns. Each weapon has access to a variety of optics, attachments and accessories, leaving you with plenty of options to fully customize loadouts to your liking. From gathered materials such as fabrics, electronics and weapons parts, you'll craft weapons, armor and equipment, while also being able to create modifications to further increase bonuses and attributes. Character customization lets you change the basic looks, hair and tattoos, skin tone and more. Combined with the different weapons, gear, clothing, perks and abilities, you can really make your character a unique creation. Additionally, you have the ability to save multiple gear loadouts that can be swapped out at any time you're outside of active combat. While not integral to the game, you'll encounter hints that will help point you towards other agents, echoes of past traumatic encounters, and other content revealing what transpired during the chaos of complete civil unrest. The game uses the Ubisoft Snowdrop engine and, despite being over five years old at this point, still looks quite fantastic. Seriously impressive. Textures are highly detailed, animations are lifelike, and cutscenes are well put together. My only real complaint here is that turning on DirectX 12 resulted in flashing textures, so I did need to stick to the DirectX 11 implementation, otherwise an excellent all-round graphical experience. Sound effects are excellent, from footsteps to gunfire to explosions and everything in between. 
Likewise, the music and background sounds are quite good and blend in well to help provide additional atmosphere to the game. Voice acting is also very good. A few quirks here and there, but by and large, very well done. I found the story to be quite good and even plausible to some extent. Runaway Pandemic, as we all know, is a real possibility and cramming that many upset people into one area is a powder cake waiting to explode. The game provides a lot of information through the many interactions with not only the main characters, but through meetings with civilians, agents and hostiles alike. There's echoes, dossiers and evidence showcasing past events. There's encounters between hostiles and friendlies who are very thankful for any assistance. And quite a few tidbits added throughout the game if you're interested. The controls and learning curve are relatively friendly and worked really well for me once I got a feel for the game. The missions, side quests and exploration felt quite natural, while combat felt really good for the most part, although I did find enemies taking far too much damage, taking away a little bit of the realism. That being said, the leveling system helps keep smooth progression and wanting to improve your skills, weapons and equipment, but does keep you somewhat confined to areas with appropriately skilled opponents. Going into a firefight with enemies who will class you often means a quick trip to your last checkpoint. It's all by design and does help you to progress more naturally through the game the way the developer intended. I did find the menu system to be a bit odd and unintuitive, but in the end it does get the job done, otherwise I was pretty happy with how the game played. You're likely to spend between 20 and 40 hours to complete this one, but if you'd like you could easily get between 50 and 80 hours from the game. There's always something to do in cleaning teaming up with other players or going rogue in the dark zone. Also keep in mind that there's some DLC available that'll further extend gameplay if you're up for it. All said, replay value is quite high. I had a good time with The Division. I wanted to play it years ago and just never got around to it, but having played it now I really wish I'd given it a try. The game looks great plays really well, the story's interesting, and it's an all-around winner. Anyone into the looter-shooter style of RPG will really enjoy this one, and it should still run really well on older hardware if you haven't upgraded in a while. Grab it while it's on sale for the best value, and have fun.